talk about him being a gritty guy, managing the game, getting it done. But they look. Oh, he rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked off at the 28, and they'll have the ball set up in the red zone at the 16 yard line. Swift. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Detroit. DeAndre Swift, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Lions on just two plays have taken the lead. People always talk about one of his biggest strengths. Throwing on third. Golf. Looking for Hawkinson, and he's got him. Touchdown, Detroit. T.J. Hawkinson, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Lions are able to extend their lead. And that was a beautiful ball right there as he waited for his tight end to come uncovered in the end zone to give him points for patience as well. Delivered it right where it needed to be. On third down, Burrow. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked off by Will Harris. CD, I know it's just his second year in the league as a quarterback, but that's going to be one when he flips on the tape. He's like, ah, I shouldn't have thrown that ball. No doubt about it, and his coaching staff will be emphatic about he shouldn't have thrown that ball. But remember, the second year, as you noted, will pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. Now this one to his tight end out on the right side. Touchdown, Bengals! C.J. Uzama. His second touchdown on the season. And the Bengals able to get this back within a touchdown. A nice throw there by the second-year quarterback. And I don't believe that was the kind of play he would have made as a rookie. Because usually your rookie season is in a continuation of your college days. A lot of one read, and if you don't have... Third and goal. They'll look to throw. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Picked by Jeff Okuda. So another interception, CD, and it feels like he's starting to unravel a little bit. And as you would expect, still a work in progress here in his second season. He has to start ironing out. Message was at halftime. I don't think the message was too drastic, I think, at the half, or that they need to change things too much. I do think the offensive line could play a little bit better. I think they'll try and help him out more. The touchdown, Detroit! DeAndre Swift, 77 yards. So there, Charles, I mean, a situation where it didn't matter how far he had to run, he was not going to be denied, and he winds up taking this all the way to the end zone. And that's his second touchdown run of this game, and this one had a high degree of difficulty to it as well. I'm absolutely marveling at how effortless he makes this look. I was at a quarterback, but number four is kind of, oh, you're like, oh, man, I can't throw. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked off at about the 31. And he's going to return it to the 21-yard line. So that's back-to-back -back drives where they're throwing an interception. Ordinarily, we look at the offense and say, what's going on with your scheme? Maybe we should look at the defense and just give them a whole lot of credit. They've got them frustrated right now. Be upset about a missed opportunity. Looking for Hawkinson, and he's got him. Touchdown, Detroit. T.J. Hawkinson, a beast in the red zone with his second touchdown of the game. And the Lions are able to grow their lead. No surprise there, third and goal down here. That's where they're going to look for their tight end. Yeah, you want that big guy running his routes because it doesn't matter who they cover him with. If it's another big guy, he might use his bulk against him. If it's a Goff now looks to throw. Got his man. That's Tyrell Williams. And in for the Lions. Touchdown. Jared Goff with his third touchdown pass of the afternoon. And the Lions get another third quarter touchdown to add on to that lead. Brandon, what we just saw there were two guys who were in sync. The person delivering the ball, but especially the person running the route. Tremendous job. The results in a terrific play. They'll give it to him up the middle. And he will take it on in for a Bengals touchdown. 
Joe Mixon with touchdown number eight on the year. And the Bengals get a small measure of revenge as they cut into this fourth quarter deficit. So it was the passing game that got him down here, but closer to the goal line, it's the running game that gets him home. Certainly appears that they lulled the defense. Here's Burrow. Well, he's going to go for it all. And it will be intercepted. Able to get there and pick it. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. And you have to wonder, Charles, a game like this, five interceptions, what does this do to the psyche of a young quarterback? Well, based on the fact that he's still out there and he threw a fifth interception, I'm wondering if his head coach believes that he's really strong mentally and wants him to play through it. Because otherwise, you need to... But Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Boy, were they clicking on offense. They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feeling like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. So for the Lions, they were first open in 2002. There's a look inside Ford Field here in downtown Detroit, the Motor City. Both teams emerging from the Ford Field tunnels just a short time ago. And of course, the loudest cheers were reserved for the hometown Lions. They're set to go as they will match up with the Cincinnati Bengals. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, we look at this Lions team entering play. They're off to a terrific start, unbeaten at 5-0 through the first month and change. And you can hang a lot of this early success on their defense, too. They're the tone setters for these guys, and the entire team feeds off of what they do. Meanwhile, for the Bengals here, they were losers their last time out. They're going to try to get back in the win column, but obviously they're going to have to do that in a hostile environment. And sometimes that actually works to your advantage. Now you've got to band together your team, the us-against-the-world mentality. Let's see if they can use it and get a victory.